Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Jennifer Marie Vio where I teach you different ways that you can make money online working from home. If you are one of my subscribers, you know that many of my videos focus on becoming a paid transcriptionist. I also have a large playlist full of videos on different transcription tools and websites to help you perfect your transcription files before submitting them. Transcribe.me is one of the transcription platforms that recommends you use a tool called Grammarly to help you check your work for any punctuation or spelling errors. So in today's video, I'm going to compare Grammarly's free online writing assistant with their premium subscription plan. To download Grammarly's free online writing assistant and follow along with me in this tutorial, click on my referral link in the description below. First of all, I want to say that I am amazed at how much this free tool has to offer. I'm not even talking right now about the premium version. I'm talking about the free version, which is free forever. I always assumed that you could only benefit from Grammarly if you had the premium membership, and I was wrong. Their free tool is incredible, and I 100% recommend that you download it. You can use this both as an extension for Firefox and for Google Chrome. So again, go to the description below and click on my link. And once you click on the link, it'll direct you to this page and will tell you to click to add it either to Firefox or to Chrome. So I'm going to click add to Firefox, it's free. Click continue to installation and click add. And now we can click okay, got it. So I am going to show you the free version first, and then I'm gonna compare it with the premium version and see what you get, what you don't get, and which one I recommend for you. So I'm going to click Got It, Activate Grammarly, and then you're going to go ahead and install it by putting in your email and your password. You can also sign up with Facebook or Google or your Apple account. Okay, so right here is the Grammarly app. You can see here we have My Grammarly. You can click on Account, if I click on subscription, you can see here that I am using the free version, which includes basic writing corrections. It includes grammar, spelling, and punctuation. So we're gonna go back to My Grammarly. And what we're going to do is click on New. So this is the new Grammarly editor, start a quick tour. Tells you editing made easy, get detailed feedback on your writing, and apply suggestions with just one click. Become a better writer. Go beyond grammar, set your goals, and we're gonna click Start Writing. So you can just start typing whatever you want to type out, or you can copy and paste it. So I have prepared a little Grammarly demo. Um, I'm pretending this is a conversation on the telephone between two different people, and I've made all sorts of different mistakes. I have not tried this in Grammarly, either the free version or the premium yet, so we're gonna do this together to see how much Grammarly uh, catches and how many errors they find, and if they find everything or, or not. So I'm gonna go ahead, right click, click Copy. Now I'm going to go back here, and you can either press Control plus V on your keyboard to paste or right click and choose Paste. Now another thing you could do is click Upload, and then here you could go ahead and locate the document that you would want to edit, and you could edit it straight into, into Grammarly right here. But I'm just going to paste. Okay, and I'm going to add a title, so this is the Grammarly free version demo. Okay, let's go through this. So you can see in this first sentence, they've ignored a few things. This here should be changed from an R to A-R-E, but they've missed that. But let's just see what they have caught. So you can see here I've written, hey John, how are you feeling? I heard you were sick. So this first uh, sentence, they haven't corrected anything. But in the second sentence, they've, if I click on where, because I accidentally wrote where instead of were for the purpose of this demo. And when you click on it, they're telling you that you need to write were, not where. So just click and it corrects it for you, okay? Thanks for asking, Jack. I'm not bad. Here, they're telling you that there should be an apostrophe. It should be I'm. So you click that and they've corrected it. But have been feeling pretty rough the last week. Did I miss anything at work? Here, they're telling you that you need to put a question mark because this is a question. So they've corrected that correctly. We had a big meeting last Friday. 
Again, they're telling you that you need to capitalize the word Friday, which is correct. And they told us that they're going to give us a raise. So here there should be a period and they have not told us that we need a period. So that's one thing that they missed. Let's keep going. I can't believe it. Click on that. Click can't, they've corrected that for us. Did they tell you when we'd get the raise? Okay, I intentionally didn't put in an apostrophe here to see if they would catch that, they didn't. Extra money would really affect my family. Here, if I click on affect, it should be affect, not affect. So they've caught that as well. Now, if you click here, they're telling us that really is unnecessary in the sentence, consider removing it. If we were using Grammarly just as a writer and not as um, a person who is transcribing, then we would listen to this sort of feedback here about conciseness and clarity. But because we are really only worried about as a transcriptionist as correctness right here, because we cannot just start taking out words that someone said. So if you were a writer, you could really take advantage of these other tips here clarity and then engagement and delivery, which are premium. But for us as a transcriptionist, you would only really need to worry about correctness, okay? So the next one, they are going to start giving raises to the accounting department first. If I click on that, they've told me that we need to change this to there or they are. So we're gonna use there. By the way, and great, they're telling us we need to put a comma after by the way, which is correct. By the way, next week is Kyle's retirement party. So once we did that, it's also popped up. It recognizes that we need to use an apostrophe because it is a person's retirement party. So we need to use apostrophe S. So we're gonna click here, Kyle's retirement party. I need you to bring napkins, cups, and paper plates. Okay, here there should be commas separating napkins um, and cups, and they haven't included that. So that is something they've missed, but well, let's keep going. I will bring them if I am feeling better and able to go. I have to see what Dr. Thompson says first. Okay, here they haven't recognized that this should be capitalized, Dr. Thompson, so they've missed that. I hope you feel better soon. Remember to get lots of rest. Thanks for the advice. Okay, here we're gonna click on advice. Okay, so now that we've gone through that, they're telling us that there are a few little other things that they will only tell us about if we get the premium. So they're saying to us, they know that this is a problem that we need to fix. Potentially this is a problem, maybe this, maybe this, and maybe this as well. So they're giving you a clue that there are six other writing issues that are only available for premium users, but on the whole, they have corrected a lot of different mistakes for us already just based in the free version. Okay, I want to show you something else that's really cool in the free version of Grammarly. Once you have installed the extension, either on Chrome or Firefox, and let's say I'm writing an email to someone, you can see here that Grammarly will be helping you anytime you're typing in anything while you're using your browser. So let's say, for example, I am sending in an email, um, I'm trying to get a job, or maybe I'm using Upwork or Fiverr and I'm trying to write out something in English and I want to make sure it's perfect. Grammarly will help you and you don't have to copy and paste. So for example, dear hiring manager. So see here, I was going to put announcement and they're instantly telling me that that's the word I'm probably going to use. So I can go ahead and click the arrow button over and it has written out the word that I wanted to use. It predicted it for me. And again, I can do interested in, let's say I write transcriptionist wrong here. See, it's just corrected it for me, which is great. So as you can see here, Grammarly is telling you right here that there's these different errors that I might like to change. So here they're telling me I need to put year. So I'm gonna click year. And then they're telling me that I should add a hyphen because I'm saying 33 year old, I should be adding hyphens. So I'm gonna click on that. Here, they're telling me it shouldn't be my MI, it should be my. And this is an excellent tool for writing cover letters, for fixing your resume, for applying to jobs in English,
or even writing comments on YouTube sometimes um, when people are making mistakes, if they have this plugin installed, it will help them even when they're commenting on videos to improve their English. So I really recommend you use this tool. Even if you can't afford the premium version, the free version alone is awesome, okay? And as you can see, if we go back here to Firefox, even though they haven't told us what these errors are, what I do like is that they are sort of directing you, telling you that there is an error there. So even if you don't purchase the premium membership, but you say, okay, something's wrong with this. I'm gonna have to look at this and see what needs to be changed. Or, okay, they're telling me there's an error here. I need to figure out what this error is. For a lot of these, these are more advanced punctuation. So I recommend that you check out my Sparkle English YouTube channel where I teach you all about capitalization rules, comma rules, colon rules, semicolon rules, and all these different things that will help you in the event that you do not have the premium membership and you want to learn how to properly use commas, that will definitely help you because if you try out a few of those and run it through Grammarly again, maybe you'll have less of these different errors here. But on the whole, the free version does an excellent job telling you most of the errors that you will find, okay? So now what I want to do is I'm gonna copy it again um, with all the corrections that the free version did and I'm going to go into my premium account and see what other errors they're telling us that they have found here to see if it's worth it to get premium and I'm gonna tell you when I would recommend getting premium and for who. So you can see here, I got a premium membership. You can see premium at the top here, and it looks very much the same as the free version. Again, I'm going to click on new, and I'm going to paste in what we just corrected and see what the premium membership will find that we couldn't find in the free version. So you can see here that the premium membership has this that pops up. It says, set your goals. So for example, if I was using this tool as a writer and wanted to improve my writing and sound a certain way, I could say who my audience was. It says you can set your goals, get tailored writing suggestions based on your goals and audience. So you could put general. I want it to be easy for anyone to read with minimal effort or knowledgeable or expert, okay? Formality, informal, allow slang and more and other more casual usages, neutral, restrict slang but allows standard casual expressions or formal. You can save it's academic, business, general, email, casual, creative. And then you can even put your tone if you wanted it to sound joyful or optimistic or friendly, for example. And this is really helpful because sometimes if you're writing an email to someone, it can sound almost rude and maybe you don't want to sound rude but your level of English isn't high enough to make it sound polite. For example, in Spanish, when I go to get a coffee from a coffee shop, pe when people are ordering coffee, they say, dame un café. And the direct translation of that is, give me a coffee. Now, if I went to a coffee shop in Canada or England or an English-speaking country, and I said to the waiter, give me a coffee, they would think, oh my goodness, you are so rude. Like, that would be a really rude thing to say. So something like this is very helpful for someone who's native language is not English. I'm just gonna go ahead and click done because for us, we're not really interested in changing the text. We just want to make sure the punctuation and everything is correct. So let's go to back to the top here. It says, hey John, how are you feeling? So they want us to add a comma, which is correct. After you say, hey John, or hey anybody, you should put a comma there. How are you feeling? And now they're letting us know that we need to capitalize John as well because it is a proper noun. Hey John, how are you feeling? So the one thing they haven't caught, the premium here, I put the letter R instead of A-R-E because I was testing if they would tell me that this isn't correct. So I'm going to change that myself to R and see if they will catch that this should be a question mark. Okay, as soon as I did that, they caught it. They want you to put a question mark. So that's good. Thanks for asking, Jack. I'm not bad, but have been feeling pretty rough the last week. Did I miss anything at work? Now here, I would want to put a comma. So I would have added that comma here myself. We had a big meeting last Friday. 
Okay, here they want us to put a comma. It appears that you are missing a comma before the coordinating conjunction and in a compound sentence. Consider adding a comma, so we'll add the comma. And they told us that they're going to give us a raise, and they're telling us we need to add a punctuation mark at the end. I can't believe it. Did they tell you when we'd get the raise? So here, I was hoping they would tell me that we need an apostrophe here because I'm. this should be we'd as in we would. So I'm gonna add that in myself. Extra money would really affect my family. They're going to start giving raises to the accounting department first. By the way, next week is Kyle's retirement party. I need you to bring napkins, cups, and paper plates. Again, here they're telling us we need to put a comma, which is correct. You could also add a comma here, and it seems that this sentence contains a series of three or more words, phrases, or clauses. Consider inserting a comma to separate the elements. Okay. I will bring them if I am feeling better and able to go. I have to see what Dr. Thompson says first. So here they haven't caught that we need to capitalize the D or put a or put a period after doctor because this is the title. So I'm gonna put it myself. Dr. Thompson, let's see if they catch. Okay, so when I capitalized the D, they were letting me know I need to put a, a punctuation mark there. I hope you feel better soon. Remember to get lots of rest. So if I click on that, here they're saying you appear to have two independent clauses improperly joined with a comma. Consider correcting the comma splice. So they are letting me know that I need, to, that this is a comma splice and this is not a correct, the correct use of a comma. So I have to put a period and capitalize R, or I could also use a semicolon here. I'm going to put a period and put an R. Remember to get lots of rest. What would happen out of curiosity if I put a semicolon? Good, a semicolon would also be correct. So now if I click on correctness, it's saying looking good, everything's great. Here, if I click on clarity, it's telling me that it's very clear. If I click on engagement, saying it's very engaging, delivery, just right, style guide, all good. And if for whatever reason you wanted to check plagiarism, you could click here, plagiarism, and it will do a search and it says, looks like your text is 100% original. We found no matching text in our databases or on the internet. So that's great to know as well, especially if you you know paid someone to do a writing for you and you wanted to check that it was original. Okay, I also want to quickly show you a demo using the email of the premium. Let's say I wrote this quick little email and I wanted to check everything was okay. You can go ahead and click on open Grammarly and it'll tell you everything about it. It says, you nailed it, sounds optimistic. So it, if you click on that, the tone detector, it says, you sound optimistic, friendly, and confident. And they gave me a rating of 100. If we go back to Grammarly, you can also click on their demo document. And here it will show you all of the different things that it helps you with. It helps you with grammatical errors, Underlines in blue indicate that Grammarly has spotted a sentence that is unnecessarily wordy. So this would be helpful if you were a writer and you wanted to correct your sentences and make them sound more concise and more clear. So now we're back here at my grammar demo for premium. And so overall, my impression of Grammarly is that it is an excellent tool, both the free version and the premium version. Now, neither were perfect. As you could see, I still had a few different errors that I had to correct myself in the premium version. But that is just basically because I don't think we're at that level right now where a computer can be 100% perfect. There were a few things that they didn't catch because I intentionally made these mistakes. But the free version was awesome. It helped me with all sorts of different errors that I made. And even if you do not have the premium version, they will still tell you that there are extra errors you need to look out for. They just won't tell you what they are. So what I like about that is they tell you where the errors are. So you can sort of think for yourself, okay, do I need to add a period or add a punctuation mark or a semicolon? And this is also why it is so important to study the correct punctuation rules in English so that you can be aware of what these errors might be. So if you are a writer or a transcriptionist, I recommend 100% that you download Grammarly. Now, who do I recommend Grammarly Premium for? Grammarly Premium is not cheap. 
For example, if I go back here and I click Go Premium, you can see that it gives you everything included in free and then also clarity focused sentence rewrites, tone adjustments, plagiarism detection, word choice, formality level, fluency, and additional advanced suggestions. And you can see here that they have premium and also business and they start at $11.66 a month. If you click get started, you'll see that that is only if you are interested in paying for a full year. So otherwise it's 26 euro or $30 a month. However, the free plan is free forever. So when would I recommend someone get premium? If you are a transcriptionist and you are working for a company like TranscribeMe or Rev or QA World or Scribby, you will know that it takes a lot of time to earn even $1, even $5, let alone $30 a month. So unless you are transcribing a lot of files and you are making over $100 a month as a transcriptionist, I wouldn't recommend you get the premium because it might not be worth it for you. However, if you are a transcriptionist and you have ongoing transcription work, maybe you are a freelance transcriptionist and you get your clients from Upwork or Fiverr, or you just have a client that you work with that you found on YouTube and you do all their subtitles for them, for example, paying an extra 11 a month if you were able to get the year-long membership or the quarterly membership might be worth it for you. I do 100% recommend Grammarly Premium for writers. So if you are a freelance writer, proofreader, or copy editor, you are probably making more money than a transcriptionist is. So you probably can spare an extra 15 a month or 12 a month to get the annual membership for Grammarly. And this will really help you to create excellent content. It will help you be transform your writing so that it makes more sense, so that it's more fluid and natural. But again, if you are struggling to make an extra hundred a month as a transcriptionist, I would save that money um, and just stick to the free version of Grammarly. And what you can do instead is really study up on your punctuation, subscribe to my Sparkle English channel, and that should be enough for you for now until eventually you get into a position where you're making more money and you think a tool like this would help you out if you invested in spending the extra 15 a month and got the annual membership. But overall, I think this is an excellent tool. I definitely recommend you download it and use it. Use it for when you're making YouTube comments, for when you're writing emails. It should really help you out and help you become more confident when you're speaking and writing and transcribing in English. So thank you guys once again for watching. If you like this video, click like and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on how to make money online. Thanks again for watching.